It's like a, a solid alarm, like at one pitch. Nestled amidst sprawling landscapes and guarded by iron gates, Jacob Rothschild's house stands as a symbol of extravagance and privilege. From its grand architecture to its meticulously manicured gardens, every detail exudes sophistication and wealth. In this video, we would uncover the disturbing report from rich kids who have been privileged to be at Jacob Rothschild's house. Edouard Berge. Urban explorer Edward Burge, armed with his camera, ventured into the abandoned mansion to document its current state. His photographs capture the haunting beauty of the decay, showcasing the remnants of a bygone era. The faded frescoes, crumbling walls and overgrown gardens tell a story of neglect and the passage of time. The Chateau Rothschild, a Nazero Louis XIV castle, holds a rich history and immense significance. Purchased by James Mayer de Rothschild in 1817, it became a symbol of the family's wealth and power. James, considered one of the richest men in the world at the time played a pivotal role in making France an industrial powerhouse following the Napoleonic Wars. The mansion itself was a testament to the Rothschild fortune. It boasted a regal English garden adorned with picturesque waterfalls and stunning indoor frescoes by renowned artist Eugene Lamy. Within its walls, James and his wife Betty hosted extravagant parties that were the talk of the town. The guest list included influential figures from the worlds of art, music, finance, entrepreneurship and politics. Rossini, Chopin, Balzac, Delacroix and many others graced the halls of the Chateau Rothschild, leaving an indelible mark on its history. One notable connection to the Rothschild mansion is the renowned composer Frédéric Chopin. Chopin dedicated his Valsum 64, N degree 2 in C sharp minor to Charlotte, the daughter of the Rothschild family. This demonstrates the close relationship between the Rothschilds and the cultural elite of the time. The mansion's opulence and grandeur were unparalleled. It stood as a symbol of the Rothschild family's immense wealth and influence, attracting admiration and envy from all who beheld it. The lavish parties held within its walls were the epitome of luxury and extravagance, solidifying the Rothschild's status as prominent figures in society. However, the fate of the Chateau Rothschild took a tragic turn. Its design, inspired by Jules Mansard's Chateau de Clagny, proved to be an omen of its future. The Chateau de Clagny, a 17th century French country estate near the Chateau de Versailles, suffered a similar fate of abandonment, neglect and eventual demolition. In 1951, the Chateau Rothschild was declared a historical monument, saving it from a similar destiny. However, the mansion's decline continued as it changed hands over the years. In 1979, James Mayer de Rothschild's youngest son, Baron Edmund, sold the castle to the city for a symbolic one, France. The city, in turn, promptly sold it to a wealthy Saudi Arabian buyer for 50 million francs, equivalent to approximately 7 million euros today. Despite changing ownership, the mansion remained in ruins, with an estimated renovation cost of 30 million euros. The once majestic Chateau Rothschild now stands as a haunting reminder of its former glory, a testament to the passage of time and the transient nature of wealth and power. While the Edmund de Rothschild Park, named after James Meyer de Rothschild's youngest son, remains open to the public, the mansion itself remains closed to visitors indefinitely. Graffiti artists and vandals have left their mark on its walls, adding a layer of intrigue to its already captivating story. The Chateau Rothschild, once a symbol of opulence and grandeur, now stands as a haunting reminder of abandonment and decay. After the Second World War, the Rothschild family fled to England, leaving their beloved mansion behind. Unfortunately, the arrival of the Germans marked the beginning of a dark chapter in the mansion's history. During the four-year Nazi occupation of Paris, the Chateau Rothschild fell into the hands of the German forces. They not only occupied the mansion, but also plundered its treasures, stripping it of its former glory. The ravages of war took a toll on the already fragile structure, leaving it in a state of disrepair. Following the liberation of Paris, the United States Army became the next occupants of the Chateau Rothschild. However, their stay did little to improve the mansion's condition. Instead, it further contributed to its deterioration. The Rothschilds, who had hoped to return to their cherished home, were met with a heartbreaking sight upon their arrival. The mansion they once knew had been reduced to a mere shell of its former self. Over the decades that followed, the Chateau Rothschild became a playground for graffiti artists and vandals. Its once majestic halls and rooms were now adorned with colorful and often provocative artwork. The juxtaposition of the mansion's faded grandeur and the vibrant graffiti created a surreal and eerie atmosphere. Despite the mansion's sorry state, it managed to escape a similar fate as its inspiration, the Chateau de Clagny, which was abandoned, neglected, and eventually demolished. In 1951, the Chateau Rothschild was declared a historical monument, ensuring its preservation. However, the subsequent years saw little progress in restoring the mansion to its former glory. In 1979, Baron Edmund de Rothschild, the youngest son of James Mayer de Rothschild, made the 
difficult decision to sell the castle to the city for a symbolic one, France. The city, in turn, sold it to a wealthy Saudi Arabian buyer for 50 million francs, hoping that the new owner would undertake the necessary renovations. However, more than three decades later, the mansion remains in ruins, with an estimated cost of 30 million euros required for its restoration. Today, the Chateau Rothschild is closed to visitors indefinitely. While the Edmond de Rothschild Park, located nearby, offers a glimpse of the mansion from a distance, the interior remains off-limits to the public. The haunting beauty of the abandoned mansion continues to captivate those who catch a glimpse of its decaying facade. Visitors can picnic on the park's lush green lawn, with the ghostly figure of the Chateau Rothschild serving as a backdrop. It is a surreal experience, as one can almost imagine the lavish parties that once took place within those walls. The park, named after James Mayer de Rothschild's youngest son, Baron Edmund de Rothschild, serves as a testament to the family's legacy. It is a place where visitors can reflect on the transient nature of wealth and power and the importance of preserving history. The Chateau Rothschild's designation as a historical monument in 1951 ensured its preservation. It was a recognition of the mansion's architectural and historical significance. However, despite its protected status, the mansion has remained in ruins for decades. In 1979, Baron Edmund de Rothschild made the difficult decision to sell the castle to the city for a symbolic one France. The city, in turn, sold it to a wealthy Saudi Arabian buyer for 50 million francs. The hope was that the new owner would undertake the necessary renovations to restore the mansion to its former glory. However, the estimated cost of renovation now stands at 30 million euros, making it a daunting task. The Chateau Rothschild's current state serves as a poignant reminder of the challenges faced in preserving historical landmarks. The cost of restoration, coupled with the complexities of ownership and maintenance, has posed significant obstacles. As a result, the mansion remains in ruins, its faded grandeur a testament to the passage of time. David Mayer de Rothschild. No one else is going to lose out apart from us and our children and their children and their children. David Mayer de Rothschild was born on August 25, 1978 in London, England, into the esteemed Rothschild family. He is the youngest of three children of Sir Evelyn de Rothschild and Victoria Luchot. The Rothschild family is renowned for their banking empire, and David Mayer de Rothschild grew up in a world of privilege and influence. Despite his privileged upbringing, Rothschild's early years were not solely defined by wealth and luxury. His mother, Victoria Luchot, was American, and his father, Sir Evelyn de Rothschild, hailed from the prominent Rothschild Bank banking family of England. This unique blend of American and British heritage would later shape Rothschild's global perspective and passion for environmental issues. Education played a crucial role in Rothschild's development. He attended Harrow School, a prestigious boarding school in England, where he excelled academically. However, it was his early interests outside the classroom that truly set him apart. As a teenager, Rothschild discovered a talent for horse jumping and quickly rose through the ranks to become a top-ranked member of Britain's junior event team. His dedication and skill in the equestrian world earned him recognition and success. Despite his achievements in horse jumping, Rothschild realized that there was more to life than spending hours on a horse. He made the decision to shift his focus towards education and personal growth. In an interview with The New Yorker, Rothschild explained, I realized there was more to life than spending hours and hours and hours on a horse. This pivotal moment marked the beginning of his journey towards exploring new horizons and making a difference in the world. This academic foundation provided him with a solid understanding of political dynamics and information technology, which would later prove invaluable in his environmental endeavors. Rothschild's thirst for knowledge extended beyond traditional academic pursuits. In 2002, he enrolled at the College of Naturopathic Medicine in London, where he obtained an advanced diploma in natural medicine. This holistic approach to healthcare further broadened his perspective and deepened his understanding of the interconnectedness between human well-being and the environment. During his early 20s, Rothschild's entrepreneurial spirit began to emerge. At the age of 20, he started his own music merchandising business, showcasing his ability to identify opportunities and take calculated risks. This early venture not only provided him with valuable business experience, but also laid the foundation for his future endeavors as an eco-adventurer and environmental advocate. In 2001, Rothschild made a significant investment that would shape his path towards environmental activism. He purchased a one 100-acre organic farm in New Zealand, demonstrating his commitment to sustainable practices and land conservation. This acquisition marked the beginning 
beginning of his journey as an enterprising eco-adventurer, combining his passion for adventure with his dedication to environmental causes. In 2006, Rothschild embarked on an extraordinary journey that would solidify his reputation as an intrepid explorer. He spent over 100 days crossing the Arctic from Russia to Canada, becoming one of only 42 people and the youngest British person to ever reach both geographical poles. This remarkable feat showcased Rothschild's determination and resilience in the face of extreme conditions. Prior to his Arctic expedition, Rothschild had already made history by becoming one of only 14 people to traverse the continent of Antarctica. This grueling journey tested his physical and mental strength as he battled freezing temperatures, treacherous terrain and isolation. Rothschild's Antarctic crossing was a testament to his unwavering spirit and his commitment to pushing the boundaries of human exploration. In collaboration with a team of fellow adventurers, Rothschild embarked on this daring expedition, facing the challenges of navigating through vast icy landscapes and enduring harsh weather conditions. Their efforts paid off when they successfully shattered the previous record, completing the crossing in record time. This achievement not only showcased Rothschild's physical prowess, but also highlighted his ability to lead and collaborate with a team in the most demanding environments. Olivia de Rothschild Olivia de Rothschild's upbringing and family background provide a fascinating glimpse into a world of immense wealth and influence. Born into the renowned Rothschild family, Olivia was surrounded by privilege from the moment she entered the world. The Rothschilds, known as one of the wealthiest families in the world, have a long history of financial prowess and power. The family's wealth can be traced back to the 18th century, when Meyer Amschel Rothschild established his banking business in Frankfurt, Germany. From there, the Rothschilds expanded their operations across Europe, key players in the world of finance. Their success allowed them to amass a fortune that would make them one of the most influential families in history. Olivia's immediate family is no exception to this legacy of wealth. Her father, whose name has not been disclosed for privacy reasons, was a thrill seeker who lived life on the edge. His adventurous spirit often took him to the most remote and dangerous corners of the world, seeking adrenaline and excitement. Unfortunately, this thirst for adventure ultimately led to his untimely death last year, leaving Olivia and her mother to carry on the family legacy. Olivia's mother, whose name is also being withheld, is a prominent figure in the perfume industry. She built her own successful brand, which has become synonymous with luxury and elegance. With her mother's guidance and expertise, Olivia is now stepping into the family business, determined to continue the legacy her parents have left behind. Growing up in such an affluent environment, Olivia was exposed to a world of privilege and opportunity. Private schools, extravagant vacations, and access to the finest things in life were all part of her upbringing. However, despite the material wealth, Olivia's parents instilled in her the importance of hard work, humility and the value of education. While her family's wealth and connections undoubtedly opened doors for Olivia, she is determined to make her own mark in the world. She understands that success cannot be solely attributed to her family name, but rather to her own efforts and dedication. Olivia's upbringing has shaped her into a driven and ambitious young woman, ready to take on the challenges that lie ahead. Olivia de Rothschild's education and personal achievements are a testament to her drive and determination to excel in all aspects of her life. Despite her privileged upbringing, Olivia has always understood the importance of education and has worked hard to achieve academic success. From a young age, Olivia attended prestigious private schools that provided her with a rigorous and well-rounded education. She excelled in her studies, consistently earning top grades and demonstrating a thirst for knowledge. Olivia's intellectual curiosity and passion for learning set her apart from her peers. In addition to her academic pursuits, Olivia also engaged in a wide range of extracurricular activities. She was an active participant in the school's debate team, honing her public speaking and critical thinking skills. Olivia also showed a talent for the arts, participating in school plays and showcasing her artistic abilities through various exhibitions. As she entered her teenage years, Olivia's passion for philanthropy and social justice began to emerge. She became involved in various charitable organizations, dedicating her time and resources to making a positive impact on the world. Olivia's commitment to giving back and helping those in need is a testament to her compassionate nature. Upon graduating from high school, Olivia was accepted into one of the world's most prestigious universities. She pursued a degree in business administration with a focus on entrepreneurship. Olivia's choice of study reflects her ambition to make a mark in the business world and continue the family legacy. During her time at university, Olivia's entrepreneurial spirit shone through. She founded her own student organization dedicated to fostering innovation and creativity among her peers. The organization quickly 
quickly gained recognition and became a platform for young entrepreneurs to showcase their ideas and collaborate on projects. In addition to her academic and extracurricular achievements, Olivia has also made a name for herself in the art world. Her unique artistic style and talent have garnered attention from critics and art enthusiasts alike. Olivia's artwork has been exhibited in prestigious galleries around the world, solidifying her status as a multi-talented individual. Despite her young age, Olivia's personal achievements are nothing short of remarkable. Her dedication to education, philanthropy and the arts sets her apart from her peers. Olivia's drive to succeed and make a positive impact on the world is a testament to her character and the values instilled in her by her upbringing. Olivia de Rothschild's future plans and aspirations are as ambitious as they are inspiring. With her impressive background, education and personal achievements, Olivia is poised to make a significant impact in the business world and beyond. One of Olivia's primary goals is to expand her mother's perfume brand and take it to new heights. Armed with her fresh perspective and innovative ideas, she is determined to bring a new level of creativity and sophistication to the industry. Olivia envisions her mother's brand becoming a global powerhouse, known for its exceptional quality and timeless elegance. In addition to her work in the perfume industry, Olivia has expressed a keen interest in philanthropy and social entrepreneurship. She plans to establish her own charitable foundation dedicated to addressing pressing social issues and making a positive impact on communities around the world. Olivia's passion for giving back is deeply rooted in her upbringing, and she is committed to using her resources and influence to affect meaningful change. Furthermore, Olivia has her sights set on expanding her entrepreneurial ventures beyond the perfume industry. She has a keen eye for spotting emerging trends and identifying untapped markets. Olivia plans to launch her own line of luxury lifestyle products, ranging from fashion and accessories to home decor. Her goal is to create a brand that embodies elegance, sophistication and impeccable craftsmanship. Anthony James de Rothschild Born on January 30, 1977 in London, England, Anthony James de Rothschild was raised in a world of privilege and wealth. His father, Sir Evelyn Robert de Rothschild, was a prominent figure in the financial industry, while his mother, Victoria Lou Schott, came from an American background. From a young age, Anthony James de Rothschild was exposed to the intricacies of the business world. He witnessed firsthand the dedication and hard work that went into building and maintaining a successful empire. Surrounded by influential figures and immersed in a culture of excellence, Anthony James James de Rothschild developed a keen interest in entrepreneurship and finance. As he grew older, Anthony James de Rothschild began to carve his own path. While his family name carried immense weight in the banking industry, he was determined to make a name for himself outside of his family's legacy. With a thirst for knowledge and a drive to succeed, Anthony James de Rothschild pursued higher education, attending prestigious institutions that would equip him with the skills necessary to thrive in the business world. During his time in university, Anthony James de Rothschild honed his business acumen and developed a deep understanding of the financial landscape. He studied various disciplines including economics, finance and management, gaining valuable insights that would later shape his career. Upon completing his education, Anthony James de Rothschild wasted no time in embarking on his entrepreneurial journey. He founded his own business ventures, leveraging his knowledge and connections to build a successful portfolio. His ventures spanned various industries, from technology and finance to real estate and philanthropy. One of Anthony James de Rothschild's notable achievements was his involvement in the technology sector. Recognizing the potential of emerging technologies, he invested in innovative startups and played a pivotal role in their growth and success. His strategic vision and ability to identify promising opportunities set him apart as a shrewd investor and entrepreneur. In addition to his business pursuits, Anthony James de Rothschild also dedicated himself to philanthropy. He believed in using his wealth and influence to make a positive impact on society. Through his philanthropic endeavors, he supported causes such as education, healthcare and environmental conservation. Leopold James de Rothschild Leopold James, who was born in 1994 to David Lionel de Rothschild and Louise de Coetlogon Williams. As the son of a prominent family, Leopold James grew up surrounded by wealth and privilege, but he has also made a name for himself in the world of finance. From a young age, Leopold James was exposed to the opulence and influence that surrounded the Rothschild family. Growing up in a world of privilege, he had access to the finest education, cultural experiences and opportunities that money could buy. However, it was not just material wealth that defined his early years. It was the values in 
instilled in him by his parents and the lessons he learned along the way. Education played a crucial role in shaping Leopold James' worldview. He attended elite schools where he received a well-rounded education that emphasized both academic excellence and character development. His parents believed in the importance of a strong educational foundation and they spared no expense in providing him with the best resources and mentors. But it wasn't just within the confines of the classroom that Leopold James thrived. He was a curious and inquisitive child, always seeking knowledge and eager to explore the world around him. His parents encouraged his thirst for learning, exposing him to a wide range of experiences and cultures. Whether it was visiting museums, attending concerts, or traveling to different countries, Leopold James developed a deep appreciation for the arts, history, and diverse perspectives. Beyond his privileged upbringing, Leopold James was taught the value of hard work and perseverance. His parents emphasized the importance of earning success through dedication and determination, rather than relying solely on their family name. They wanted him to understand that true achievement comes from personal effort and a commitment to excellence. As Leopold James entered his teenage years, he began to show a keen interest in the world of finance. He would spend hours poring over financial news, analyzing market trends, and engaging in discussions with his family members who were already established in the industry. It became clear that he had a natural aptitude for understanding complex financial concepts and a passion for the intricacies of the business world. While some may assume that Leopold James's success was handed to him on a silver platter, it is important to recognize the drive and ambition that fueled his journey. He was determined to carve out his own path and make a name for himself, separate from the achievements of his ancestors. This determination, coupled with his natural talent, set him on a trajectory towards a successful career in investment banking. Nomi Alex Michelle Leonora Harley de Rothschild Nomi Alex Michelle Leonora Harley de Rothschild's journey began in San Salvador, where she was born on November 14, 1965, into a French family. Her father, an executive director in an international pharmaceutical company, provided her with a privileged upbringing. However, Nomi's childhood was far from ordinary, as she lived in various countries, including Bangladesh, Colombia, and the Democratic Republic of Congo due to her father's work. Despite the constant changes in her environment, Nomi remained focused on her education. She attended science Sciences Po in Paris, where she honed her intellect and developed a passion for finance, eager to expand her horizons, immersing herself in the vibrant financial hub of the world. During her time in New York, Nomi's dedication and talent caught the attention of Societe Generale Bank, where she began working while still a student. This early exposure to the world of finance laid the foundation for her future success. Nomi's early life and education set the stage for her remarkable journey in the finance industry. Her experiences in different countries and her academic pursuits shaped her into the determined and resilient woman she is today. Nomi Alex Michelle Leonora Harley de Rothschild's career trajectory within the Rothschild Group is nothing short of extraordinary. After completing her studies, she embarked on a professional journey that would solidify her as a force to be reckoned with in the finance industry. In 1990, Nomi joined American International Group, where she had the opportunity to work with high-profile clients. It was during this time that she crossed paths with Baron Benjamin de Rothschild, who would later become her husband. Their connection was not only personal but also professional as Benjamin was a client of the company. Nomi's marriage to Benjamin in 1999 marked a turning point in her career. She assumed various roles within the Rothschild Group, overseeing operations in diverse sectors such as wineries, farms, hotels and restaurants. Her leadership skills and business acumen quickly became evident, propelling her ascent within the organization. In 2006, Nomi joined the supervisory board of La Compagnie Financière Edmond de Rothschild, LCF. Her contributions and dedication led to her appointment as a member of the management board in 2008, followed by her promotion to vice president in 2009. During this time, she focused on the environmental and social impacts of investments, demonstrating her commitment to sustainable practices. In 2010, the company underwent a significant transformation, rebranding as the Edmund de Rothschild Group. Nomi's influence continued to grow, and in 2015, she was appointed as the CEO, solidifying her position as a trailblazer in the finance industry. Industry. Finally, in 2019, she reached the pinnacle of her career, becoming the president of the Edmund de Rothschild Group. Nomi Alex Michelle Leonora Harley de Rothschild's rise within the Rothschild Group is a testament to her unwavering determination, exceptional leadership skills, and unwavering commitment to making a positive impact. Alianor Marie-Hélène Jacqueline de Rothschild 
From a young age, Alianor was exposed to a world of culture and refinement. Her upbringing was marked by a blend of European sophistication and American sensibilities. She received a top-notch education at Marymount College in Tarrytown, New York, where she honed her intellect and refined her social skills. After completing her studies, Alianor set her sights on the City of Lights, Paris. It was in the French capital that she would truly come into her own and establish herself as a prominent figure in high society. Paris became her playground, a place where she could indulge in her passions for art, fashion, and the finer things in life. Alianor's education and exposure to the world of privilege laid the foundation for her future endeavors. She possessed a keen intellect and a natural flair for elegance, which would serve her well in the years to come. Her upbringing instilled in her a sense of refinement and an appreciation for the arts, which would shape her life and influence her choices. But Alianor's early life was not without its challenges. Growing up in a world of wealth and privilege came with its own set of expectations and pressures. She was expected to uphold the family name and carry on the legacy of the Rothschild banking dynasty. These expectations, coupled with the societal demands placed upon her, shaped her character and fueled her drive to succeed. Despite the weight of her family's reputation, Alianor embraced her individuality and sought to carve out her own path. She was not content to simply be a figurehead or a socialite. Instead, she sought to make a name for herself through her own accomplishments and contributions to society. Alianor's early life and education laid the groundwork for the remarkable woman she would become. Her exposure to diverse cultures, her intellectual pursuits, and her refined upbringing shaped her into a woman of substance and influence. Alianor Marie Helene Jacqueline de Rothschild's life was marked by two significant marriages that would shape her personal and public identity. The first of these unions was with the French Count Francois de Nicolet, a horse breeder whom she met in Paris after completing her education. Their marriage in 1950 brought forth a son, Philippe de Nicolet, who would later become a director of Paris Orléans PA, a French investment bank belonging to the Rothschild family. However, despite the initial promise of their union, Alianor and Francois faced challenges that ultimately led to their divorce in 1956. The dissolution of their marriage marked a turning point in Alianor's life as she sought to redefine herself and find a new path forward. It was during this period of self-discovery that Alianor crossed paths with her third cousin once removed, Baron Guy de Rothschild. Guy, the head of the de Rothschild Freres Bank, was a prominent figure in the world of finance and shared Alianor's passion for art, culture, and the finer things in life. Their connection was undeniable, and on February 17, 1957, they were married in a lavish ceremony in New York City. Alianor's marriage to Guy was groundbreaking in many ways. It marked the first time that a head of one of the Rothschild families had married a non-Jewish spouse. This union challenged societal norms and traditions, and it came with its fair share of controversy. Guy was forced to resign from the presidency of the Jewish community in France, and Alianor, being Catholic, had to obtain a papal dispensation to annul her first marriage in order to remarry outside the Catholic faith. Together, Alianor and Guy had a son named Edouard Etienne Alphonse, who was raised in the Jewish faith. Their marriage was a testament to their shared values and their commitment to breaking barriers and defying expectations. Despite the challenges they faced, Alianor and Guy remained devoted to each other and built a life together that was filled with love, opulence, and a shared passion for the arts. Throughout their marriage, Alianor and Guy were known for their extravagant lifestyle and their love of hosting grand soirees. They became fixtures in Parisian high society, and their parties were attended by European nobility, musicians, artists, fashion designers, and even Hollywood movie stars. The couple's Chateau de Ferrières became a hub of creativity and glamour, where the worlds of art, fashion, and entertainment collided in a dazzling display of opulence. In 1975, Alianor and Guy purchased Hotel Lambert on the Ile Saint-Louis, one of the most luxurious mansions in Paris. This acquisition further solidified their status as tastemakers and trendsetters. They transformed the mansion into a haven of elegance and refinement, where they hosted gatherings that brought together the creme de la creme of society. If you enjoyed this video and would love to keep exploring more videos like these, then go ahead and click on any of the cards on your screen to stay updated.